Oh, Emma, what is a unit fraction? It's one over uh, something like one over five and one over two. Good. A unit fraction has a numerator of one. When we're dividing with whole numbers and fractions, we're only using unit fractions this year. Unit fractions and whole numbers. And remember, when we divide, the order matters. The order matters. So let's look at this first problem up I have up here. Three divided by one half. Now we got various ways we can do this. Those of you that listened to the video yesterday, those of you that listened to the video and not just watched it, got a good grade. Some of you just watched. What are you doing? You said three and one half. Oh, three divided by one fifth, right? Yeah. Okay. There's a couple ways. I'm going to tell you, you're going to have another Ed puzzle today. And for the love of Pete, listen to it. It's going to help you get a good grade. Use some scratch paper to work it out. It's going to help you get a good grade. So one of the ways I can do 3 divided by 1 fifth is by a number line. Three divided by one fifth. I guess I only need to go to three. What was I thinking of? So I only need to go to three here because that's my whole number. And because the Bill of Rights says I can make my number line however I want to make my lump number line, I'm going to make my number line with fifths because that's going to help me when I do this problem. So I got one fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths. Five fifths would equal one. One and one fifth, one and two fifths, one and three fifths, one and four fifths. One and five fifths would equal two. Two and one fifth, two and two fifths, two and three fifths, two and four fifths, two and five fifths would equal three. So now I want to take my three holes and I want to divide it into how many fifths fit into this three holes. How many fifths fit into the three holes? So on this, I really have to just jump. Every time I get a fifth, I jump, and then I count how many times I jumped, and I'm gonna jump a total of how many? 15. 15. That's 15 jumps. So if you had that picture, and it said, which problem does this represent? And that's how you do it. If you had an example problem in words, um, Polari was running three miles, and they put a water station every one-fifth of a mile, how many water stations would there be? Well, there would obviously there would be 15. Because after one-fifth, there'd be a water station, two-fifths, there'd be a water station, three-fifths. Now another way you may see three divided by one fifth is in pictures. Now I am not accurate in drawing circles, so that's not what I'm gonna do on this particular problem, especially circles that divide into fifths. And then I just have to divide this into fifths. And I would see how many fifths are there. And once again, you'd find out if I counted the number of fifths there, there would be 15. Brindley. And you can also make a unit fraction, 15 ones. 15 ones. That's not a unit fraction. A unit fraction has a numerator of one. Oh, oh. Okay. So these are a couple ways I could do this problem. A couple ways you may see this problem done. But now let's look at a fraction, a unit fraction, divided by a whole number. And I'm going to try circles on this one. But let's say that, that Brian Cage has 2, 
That's two is our whole number. Two pizzas. And he's going to give a half of a pizza to two friends. He's going to give a half of a pizza to two friends. Let me read this here. A half of a pizza to two friends. So is each person going to get more than or less than a half a pizza? Less. You can't say no. Oh. <laughs> more than or less than a half a pizza, it's obviously going to be less. So each person, here's my half a pizza that they're splitting. How much is each person going to get? One fourth of a pizza. A lot of times it's easier if I divide the whole thing up. Okay, one fourth of a pizza. You may see it. Okay, now this is the um, Jets pizza, where it's the four corner pizza. Yeah, this, so do I. This is one of those. So this is the half a pizza that Brian Cage is sharing with his friends. And so they would each get, but if I only put the mark there, it's kind of hard to tell. So I divide each half in half and get one-fourth. You may see a problem similar, similar to this. I take my one-half and I'm going to divide it into equal groups and each group is worth one-fourth. Now remember, you do have the online zippy fraction bar thing that you can use. So something like this might be something you can use if you wanted to use the online fraction bar zippy thing. The pictures are something you could use. And because multiplication is easier, I thought today we'd do an addition one. And so let's take 1 eighth plus 2 thirds. Now you know that when we have the test, I've put 4,286 videos on the tube of you with adding and subtracting, multiplying and dividing fractions um, that you can always refer back to to remember all the steps. Because, yeah, adding and subtracting has some steps. I'm just saying. It has some steps. We need to first find the least common denominator. And yes, on Friday when we take the fractions operations test, you may use the multiplication chart. If I use the multiplication chart and I look down the row that starts with 8, so 8, 16, 24, 32, the row that starts with 3, I can go 3, 6, 9, 12, uh, 15, 18, 21, 24, and I'm going to find 24 is the first number that appears in each row. So my least common denominator is 24, which means I'm changing each of these fractions so that they have a common denominator of 24. Now, obviously, my answer is not going to change each of these fractions so that they have a denominator of 24, but I have to make them equivalent fractions. I can't just move the 1 over because 1 eighth is not the same as 1 24. So I have to figure out what am I going to multiply by 8 to get 24? Brinley? Um, one, the 1 eighth is 3 times 3. Okay, so if I multiply 8 times 3, and again, if I've done my work over here, or I use my multiplication chart, I can see 8 times 1, 8 times 2, 8 times 3, and my new numerator is 3. Then I have to figure out what, how many times I multiplied 3 by to get 24, and I can always count over here, but it, 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 it is 8. And so I multiply my numerator and my denominator by 8, and I get 16. And then I have to check my sign, check my sign, check my sign. And it is an addition problem. Then Drea, I have 3 24ths plus 16 24ths equals 19 24ths. Thank you to my young friend Drea. Now, until you get really 
doing a lot of these, you're going to always want to see if they can be simplified. What kind of number is 19? Prime. Prime. It only has two factors, one and itself. What kind of number is 24? Composite. Composite. So it's going to have more than one in itself. 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6. Uh, I think that's all. What is the greatest common factor? One. Greatest common factor equals 1. If the greatest common factor equals 1, that, my friends, is your fraction in lowest terms. Yes, that is simplified. Lowest terms. It's reduced. All the ways they say it. Susakia? Um, I was thinking about the second question. Uh -huh. So, is it one half divided by two equals a one? No, because we're, we're dividing, dividing one half. So, I need how many pieces would equal one half? Oh, okay. Okay? So, and they need to be the same, obviously. So, one fourth plus one-fourth equals one-half. Because we're dividing it, so we're going to make one-half smaller. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I think... Boom, chocolate, peace out. God bless, love you. Do something kind today. Shave the bees. Please subscribe. Read me, Dr. Pepper.